to thank warmly the ERF and the team uh, for organizing such a great event. So my presentation is going to be basically agreeing with uh, Mustafa Estefania on, on, uh, on the diagnostic, but it's going to be much more on the normative side. It's, it's going to be a plea uh, for a new economy. So rather than talking about the new normal and uh, considering that indeed uh, most of the obstacle uh, for the region to move ahead are domestic, I'm going to be focusing on what are the new sources of growth, what are the uh, uh, impulse uh, that needs to happen for uh, this economy to transform. So I'm going to be arguing, and that's based on a recent piece published on, uh, on the forum uh, with uh, Hafez Ranem, uh, the forum being the blog of, uh, of the ERF. So the title of, the, of that blog was uh, A Moonshot for Mena. So, um, uh, if you didn't really check it out. Uh, um. So the, uh, the point about the, uh, the moonshot approach is, is akin to what, uh, of course, uh, in 1961, uh, GFK launched with the hope of catching up with uh, its then rival, the USSR, and, and, and catching up technologically. And um, the design of the moonshot was a very specific one, uh, uh, which was to send an American to the moon, but with a very tight deadline, and this galvanized a whole nation uh, and had ripple effect well beyond the target that was set uh, and achieved prior to uh, the deadline. So why are these moonshots uh, uh, relevant uh, in this context of MENA? Uh, as argued earlier, many of the MENA countries are, uh, in, in effect, uh, trapped uh, in, in this middle income status and are at risk of falling uh, behind. And I'm going to argue that this is mostly due to government-induced obstacle to technology adoption in key sectors. And in thinking about structural transformation, I'd like to entertain the view that the kind of structural transformation we should be thinking about with this growing educated uh, population is the one that is presented to us by the fourth industrial revolution. So, and these key sectors are going to be telecom and uh, uh, fintech. So, let me give a bit of, a, of the context, even so my colleagues have, uh, have done a superb job uh, over this. So, the, uh, the way to think about the growth model of MENA is indeed very much driven by public sector spending and a model uh, driven by uh, consumption through universal subsidies and the like. And this, was, uh, this is what the uh, regional strategy of the bank uh, that was designed by my predecessor, Shanta and, and, uh, and Hafez and others, uh, uh, they, they coined that as the old uh, social contract based on some of the work that uh, I think uh, Mustafa and others have done. So, um, the idea was that these social contracts, these old social contracts, amounted to de-risk uh, the citizenry. And uh, this led to very little, indeed, uh, innovation, uh, initiatives, and the like. And this led, indeed, to weak service delivery and mistrust. What I'm advocating here is, is a need for a, social, a new social contract, one that does uh, indeed build and, and, uh, uh, and is addressed to uh, these majority of youth which are edu who are edu educated and who are voicing their uh, grievances over social media but are unable to use this energy on social media and direct it toward uh, much uh, more productive means. And sometimes this is not possible because uh, mobile payment or e-payment are not allowed or not uh, a refrain or the uh, internet quality is limited. So uh, the future rests into uh, a new economy, a, a service, a digital economy that is autonomous and driven by the use. So uh, a sketch of what the future could lie for, uh, for the MENA region, like in many advanced economies where the digital, the service sector has taken over, is that the traditional sector, which has uh, uh, been captured uh, in many countries in, in MENA 
is very much a, uh, uh, would, would be a very small uh, slice uh, of the much bigger cake. I should have made the new economic cake much bigger. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and indeed, uh, this could uh, um, allow for uh, some of the uh, economic empowerment that we'd like to see uh, uh, on the youth. So let me argue why technology, and I think this was brilliantly uh, argued by Estefania, um, the, the, the point about technology being absolutely the, the cornerstone of what, what the new growth model uh, should be. So productivity has to come with a faster, deeper technology adoption, and in thinking about leapfrogging, clearly you've got to think uh, digital. So clearly a, what the uh, standard uh, let me press on the right button. Oh, yeah. So the, the traditional approach, and including at the bank and, uh, and other international organizations, was to work on, on governance and, and hope that by help, helping rewrite the rules of the game, we'll get more you know, new entrant, a new uh, market structure, and then only hope that these new firm, these new entrants, would adopt technology uh, much faster and help lift productivity and, and growth. This clearly didn't work. Um, that, that approach, the, 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 the type of uh, negotiation uh, around rules of the game, allowing for new entrants, uh, didn't work. These are the, the terms that uh, Mustafa used in terms of crony capitalism. And this led to very little technology adoption. So my... Uh, uh, little uh, uh, new economy paradigm here is to think about flipping this on its head and, and arguing that we need technology adoption as the prime way in which we are engaging uh, with uh, authorities, including in, in, the, uh, in the telecom uh, sector, arguing, for instance, for 5G, uh, high quality, affordable internet for all and uh, allowing for peer-to-peer -peer payment system. So that would allow for much more empowerment and indeed allow for a new set, a new class of entrants, educated, young, tech-savvy people who would energize the economy by bringing all these uh, network effects uh, that digital platform uh, are, are bringing in Asia and, 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 and of course, in, in the US and part of the advanced world. So clearly, when thinking about structural transformation, we need to be thinking fourth industrial revolution, we need to be thinking digital platform, network effect, and indeed new entrant with the risk that they pose, uh, and then have that governance uh, basically being redefined as uh, de facto, uh, as opposed to focusing on, on this rewriting of, of the rules of the game, which has not led us uh, very far. Stuck. So, what, are, what, what do uh, the authority need to, uh, to do in terms of mental uh, uh, shift? We know, and Mustafa argued uh, uh, this point, is that most of the growth has been driven by investment, public investment in physical infrastructure. So these guys, uh, by these guys I mean the authorities, clearly have in mind a, a scheme whereby traditional utility, electricity, gas, uh, utilities and the like, are the cornerstone of the old economy, whereby firms cannot function if electricity is not on. What the fourth industrial revolution, what the leapfrogging uh, uh, should be forcing us to, to think about is what are the digital utilities? What are the utilities of the future which are, who, who are, which are front and center to a, that, uh, that promotion of a structural transformation, but being ambitious toward a digital uh, economy? So those are two, uh, in my view, and uh, I'd love to hear you, your feedback, Broadband, so high quality 5G, uh, hopefully achieving 5G before, uh, say, uh, some of the advanced economies, and um, a, a, and digital payments. So M-payment that we've seen in low-income countries being adopted much faster 
than in MENA country where the tendency to centralize, to, to control uh, with regulation that are focused on prudential aspect, but not on innovation and, 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 and the consumer experience, the service uh, quality is, uh, uh, is the order of the day. So clearly digital utilities, being the internet, being the fintech, are criti critical to the new economy. You know, in that uh, fantasy world, in that hopeful world, uh, what would happen is that by digitalizing, by having this key sector adopt technology, and it's not so much that firm in the MENA region are not interested in, in, uh, in, uh, in digitalizing, but if you have an internet of poor quality and you cannot transact online, why would a firm uh, venture into digitalization? That, that, that doesn't mean anything. So clearly what we need is, is really a big push on the part of some champion uh, in the region like we see in Sub-Saharan Africa in promoting the digital utility so this can trickle down uh, and be incentive uh, compatible with what a uh, firm uh, would like to do. So the hope uh, as we move into the digital utility focus, that mental shift, what we could hope for is that the traditional utilities, the electricity utilities, would become like NL and suddenly become the, the, the Google of energy, meaning that they won't sell just electricity, but the service around electricity, and also adopt that kind of uh, uh, new model where uh, service uh, and data around electricity consumption behavior becomes really the new, uh, the new commodity. So we've seen that with NL, we've seen that with major utilities around the world moving uh, digital and, 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 and uh, allowing for services uh, of higher quality uh, to, to emerge. What is the global context? Stefania mentioned it. We went through a number of phases uh, when it came to uh, a, a waves of uh, technological innovation. The, uh, the latest one, and perhaps the most disruptive, the ultimate uh, uh, one, is artificial intelligence, where we would move from automation to autonomous. Why am I, uh, why am I raising that, to, uh, considering that MENA doesn't really, is not a champion when it comes to technology adoption? And that, as I argued, is really the cornerstone of this middle income trap for MENA. Why is it relevant? Because whether you, you like it or not, the fact that the Chinese or the Asians are automatizing their uh, production chain is going to have a huge impact on Africa and the Middle East. We, uh, the traditional path uh, uh, to, that went from agriculture to manufacturing uh, will or may not be available because of, uh, of automation of, of, uh, of manufacturing that uh, the Chinese and others are mastering. So clearly, here, the leapfrogging uh, uh, argument um, makes a lot of sense, uh, considering that we have a large educated population that could uh, potentially uh, prepare us well for uh, the jump toward uh, a more uh, digital economy. So what is it in the, in the, um, in the current uh, uh, balance of things, of factors that uh, prevent us from being, uh, um, you know, productive uh, in many respects. I'm going to argue, and yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to take a different. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to take the the, the, the full <laughs> uh, um, um, employment or labor force participation assumption. We've also done the same calculation that Mustafa are done in, in maintaining the, the labor force participation. But here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exaggerate. I'm going to argue that if everyone coming into the labor market from the 2000 era to 2050, and you accumulate that, you, you'll get a, an astronomical number of 300 million. I don't recall when you use different, uh, different assumption on, on labor force participation, but I'm going to argue that because uh, most of the newcomers are educated, they're female, they're all going to want to be educated. And we've seen uh, uh, indeed that uh, males uh, are flanking, which is worrisome in, in some respect in terms of education level. So 
clearly there is uh, urgency to try and, uh, and uh, match these uh, aspirations with quality jobs. And this is going to be very different from the past, uh, as argued by Mustafa. This is now educated newcomers with much stronger aspiration and, and the willingness to, uh, to be productive and use technology to be productive. So clearly, when you look at those are numbers that I'm sure are well known to, to all of you, but MENA does suffer from that uh, negative skill premium, uh, meaning that in, 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 in many cases, uh, the uh, uh, unemployment rate uh, of the higher educated uh, uh, individuals is uh, flirting with 40, 50 percent, while in, in the advanced world it's below 5 percent. It's also a case that MENA is an export market uh, to the rest of the world when it comes to human capital. And it's also the case, uh, and I, I'm going to argue that this is my main, uh, my main uh, motivation for why we need government uh, catching up uh, with technology adoption and stopping preventing the connection between educated youth and technology. I'm going to argue that there's a huge gap, especially in the sectors where the leapfrogging has to happen, uh, which is the telecom and the finance sector. So I'm going to go, yes, thank you. I'm going to argue that uh, the, uh, so while everybody has a phone uh, in, in the region, the quality of the internet on average is, is the poorest of all region. And this is shown in the bandwidth um, capacity. The, uh, also, the average of uh, uh, cashless payment is very, very low. The introduction of M payment and E payment is very much lagging behind. Egypt is trying to catch up. Things are happening, but uh, at a slow pace, uh, considering we are middle income countries and some low income countries have, have already uh, made the step and, and, and are running with it. So, and, and this is again uh, a matter of the, the prudential focus of regulation as opposed to the innovative and, and, and technology focus. Um, and so, the, uh, again, this is also linked to some of the crony capitalism argument that there is a lot of concentration in some of this sector, which is slowing adoption. A paradox in many cases of partial privatization in telecom, and, and I won't mention the countries is that even so you had new entrant, you had foreign player coming in, what happened is prices kept going up and you, you got little technology adoption. You, 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 you got stuck into uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, older technology. And that is because of some element of collusion uh, between the uh, historical players, the national champion, and the foreign um, uh, entrant. So regulation, if it were to be done right, would be focused on consumer uh, welfare and would argue for some, some sort of yardstick competition, which is that we are going to set, we will set prices and, uh, um, and, and quality as if competition uh, were to be operative. And that's the argument behind the moonshot approach. So in, in a nutshell, the young folks in the region when they're not uh, abroad when they, they are not uh, subject to the brain drain are on Instagram and Facebook but not on PayPal. And that's really, uh, to me, really shooting yourself on the foot. You've got educated, uh, tech-savvy individual, but you're preventing them from having access to the very means of, of money transfer that can allow them to be productive and stop criticizing you on, uh, on, the, uh, on social media. There are some green shoots, and uh, this is uh, work done with Mohammed uh, Jibil, who is sitting there in the back. So we, we have some, uh, some interesting uh, digital platforms that are emerging, but in the, in the region we have one unicorn, one uh, startup that has reached the valuation of one billion. This is Karim, it's well known to many of you. But that's, of course, uh, very little for uh, a region of that size with such markets, and in a sense, adopting internet of high quality, affordable for all, and means of payment that are allowing peer-to-peer -peer payment would unify at the domestic and potentially at the regional level, unify the market and make, me, make it much more attractive to foreign investment. So we've got Kareem, which is the Uber of the Middle East. 
We've got Surk, which has, uh, in fact, uh, has been acquired by Amazon for half a billion, and uh, Jamalan, uh, which is a, a book provider online. So we have many more of these, of course, those are green shoot, but the future lies into a, a new economy where the new players are gonna be younger, more educated, more tech savvy, and are likely to uh, bring a lot more contestability into the game, in distributional chain, in uh, logistical chains, and are uh, uh, likely, uh, hopefully, going to invert that triangle uh, by uh, being the uh, early adopter of technology and uh, essentially bring a lot more of the, uh, of the productivity that uh, uh, we need to see for this region to continue growing and employ uh, its massive use, uh, uh, massive educated use. Thank you very much.